Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's just get going. So first up, why didn't MicroStrategy's $423 million investment move the Bitcoin's price? And it's actually pretty simple. It's because they did thousands of transactions over three days and they didn't move the market much at all. The big story though is the other companies that saw what just happened and they have trillions of dollars also. Digital bank Revolut taps Fireblocks to support new crypto based services. And I actually have a business account with Revolut. It is a banking institution. And what this could actually mean is we have another bank that is going to host, sell, and buy cryptocurrencies, just like the newly formed financial services Kraken. And a follow-up to yesterday's story where we talked about Hedgeye CEO selling all his Bitcoin, this is going to pretty much lay it out why he did it. And the question really is asked, did he sell too soon? DeFi market cap drops a quarter or 25% in one day. And another question is asked is, is this the right time to start to buy decentralized finance? And finally, Google Cloud bets on EOS blockchain venturing further into crypto. And this really isn't the story. The story is how Google is getting its tentacles into every type of business. And I think what's going on is Google is trying to corner some of the market. So we'll go over all that, but first take a look what's going on in the market. So it is 6 p.m. on the dot. Texas time. It is October 8th. Now let's see what we got. So Bitcoin is up today, thankfully, almost hit, reaching that 11,000. It's up 2% or 1% for a seven day period. Pretty good. Ethereum just sitting at 350. I'll take it. Tether's Tether with its $15 billion market cap. XRP, which is pegged to the quarters at a quarter. Just kidding. It's uh, it's XRP. Bitcoin Cash is up 4.5%. Let's see. What else? Everything's pretty much up, I think. Six and a half for Polkadot, sitting at the right back where it was, 410. Uh, Chainlink, 950, right below 10. Uh, 1 1.2 for Litecoin, but nine. I think really fantastic that it really strikes or jumps out too much. Woo! Uniswap up 11%, but down 20% for the week. So uh, if yesterday, if you sold, uh, maybe that wasn't a good choice. But uh, today looks like uh, it could be a little bit better. And uh, maybe if you bought yesterday, then it was actually a great move. You're in finance up 11%, even though the all-time high was around 40,000 or somewhere around there. 8.7 for Uma. Hey, good job. And that's really the most miraculous, fantastic stuff. Ooh, Ave up 13.6%. I'm actually going to be on Alex Mascioli's show tomorrow, and we're going to talk with Stanley Kulichov, who's the founder. I've got a couple of questions for him. So uh, if you've got some questions that you want me to ask him, uh, just go ahead and put that in the comment section, and I'll I'll put it out there. But it should be a pretty good show. All right, let's jump into today's stories because we got a lot to go over. First up, why did MicroStrategy's almost half a billion dollar investment move Bitcoin's price? So really it's not much of a surprise i mean i'm not gonna go through this whole article because we already talked about it i mean it's pretty much laid out right here by the ceo michael saylor he says look to acquire almost seventeen thousand bitcoin we traded continuously for 74 hours executing almost ninety thousand trades which is 0 0.19 bitcoin each three seconds so that's about forty thousand in bitcoin per minute but all times we were ready to purchase 30 to 50 in a few seconds if we got lucky with one or two percent downward spike so i cannot imagine the team you have to put together and the patience that you have to have to do that continuously or the program or the bots or whatever else that they use but it didn't really move too much of course they did some otc of course they didn't just use one exchange they probably you know uh spread it all out with uh, the top five or top six exchanges and that's pretty much it and this is a it's a well-written article i'm not going to put anything away from it and talks about you know this is the formulas and whatever else and at this point i almost fell asleep but really what it comes down to is this <clears throat> the story for me was the second to last paragraph. And it states right here, Sailor, CEO, also mentioned that there are 35,000 publicly traded companies carrying a total of five trillion in spare cash, getting negative real returns due to the pandemic. This is where it goes off the rails because let's do some quick math, but it says even if one to 2% of this capital, and it says five trillion, flows into Bitcoin, this would easily push its market cap to two trillion and beyond. So I was reading this and I'm like, I, I just don't see it, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, so they're talking here about there's a total of five trillion in spare cash getting negative real returns. So that is true. There is a ton of companies right now and they are sitting on what Sailor called a melting iceberg or melting ice. All that cash 
is just depreciating in value or you have inflation at 2% and actually they think it's way more than that. So what you're doing is you're just looking at your cash going, well, goodbye, because it doesn't really do too much, just like the purchasing power of the United States dollar ever since 1913. But it has been accelerated, especially with the quantitative easing. You cannot print this much money and not expect to have some kind of repercussion. So this is what sailors have has seen. This is what some other CEOs have seen. This is what big players in the game who are smart have seen. And this is what is going to be seen by these CEOs, by these businesses, by these CFOs, and not only them, it's going to be looked at and scrutinized by the stockholders of the company going, what are you guys doing? We need something that actually will appreciate, doesn't depreciate, get yourself into Bitcoin. If you can't do that, just let's get into gold or something like that. So I think that the big companies that are sitting on cash right now are probably looking at Michael Saylor going, you know what, makes a lot of sense. And I think this is one of those pushes that will happen for Bitcoin. Now, this part right here, even if one or two percent of the capital flows into Bitcoin, easily pushes market to two trillion. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but I will just say this: uh, there's, if you have five trillion sitting around, what do you think these companies are going to do? Do you think they're just going to sit there and just watch the cash depreciate, or are they going to take a look at, oh, well, Michael Saylor did it? Oh, well, Paul Tudor Jones did something like that. Oh, there's other players coming into it. Oh, we've got other people. And before you know it, it's a domino effect. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, hold on, he's doing it, he's doing it, she's doing it. I got to do it. And before you know it, there is a tipping point. And that tipping point is coming a lot faster than what people think. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.